Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr Hegarty here and in this video I'm going to do something actually quite different than any video I've made before. This video is mainly directed towards teachers um, just to talk about something I've seen in my classroom and just to see whether you uh, agree with this or whether you've seen this in your classroom and whether you'd be interested in um, feeding back on the ideas on this video. Now, in the, this video is going to have a, a blog post associated with it, which has all the details, but I just find it easier to explain maths on a video and write it than uh, write using LaTeX and, and on Word, etc. So, I wanted to talk about subtraction and a method of subtraction that doesn't involve borrowing. How I've used that, um, I've, I want to show you a method I've used with my classes and see what you think. Now firstly, let's do a subtraction using the column method, the way that most kids do this in school. So say we had 751, subtract 234. So what we've got is we've got 700s, we've got 5 tens, and we've got 1 1, and we're subtracting 200s, 3 tens, and 4 1s, as follows. So students would usually write it in a column method, they would put a line underneath, and then what they do is they would they might say something along the following lines. They might say one subtract four you can't do. They may say something like that. So then they would say, so we need to borrow from the tens column. So they would borrow from the tens column. So they might cross that out and change that to four tens and put one of the tens in here in the ones column. So now we have 11 subtract 4, which is equal to 7. Now we've got 4 tens subtract 3 uh, tens, which is 1 ten, and 700 subtract 200, which is equal to 500. Now, they may or may not get that question right. I found that most kids actually are quite good with the column method in a simple case like that. But for me, there's a problem with the phrase can't do 1 subtract 4, when they're trying the first column, and also actually with the term borrow. Let me say what I'm trying to uh, explain here. Now, the problem with borrowing, the term borrowing, as this man George Osborne in the UK knows, is if you borrow too much money, you have to pay it back. So when we talk about borrowing here, borrowing a 10 here, we're not actually paying it back. So maybe the use of the word borrow is a bad word, and maybe we should actually use something like exchange. And I know it seems quite semantic and quite uh, into the detail there, but I actually do think it makes a difference. If you're going to use an analogy, it should be appropriate. But the other main thing is can't do. In this question here, I said on purpose that one subtract four, you can't do. And so we went on to borrow. Now, as you'll all know, um, you can do one subtract four. The answer is negative three. So, f so maybe if we use a phrase like this, or kids are using the phrase one subtract four you can't do, it's actually propagating an error uh, that they later find difficult. I've seen many kids who, when you ask them what's three subtract nine, just write six because it's easier to do that. So maybe we're propagating an error by allowing them to say that and maybe even saying it ourselves. I know I was taught that way. I know I've said it in the past. Um, so maybe it's a problem. Okay, so I'm going to move on and do another question using the um, borrowing method again, just like before. So I just want to show you this one. This is how a student might have done this in the past. So 741 subtract 264. Um, they'd have put a line under it and then they'd have done the subtraction. Now here, the reason I'm putting this in is there's actually going to turn out to be two borrows. And watch how confusing this gets, even for me. Now they might again say, you can't do 1 subtract 4. Okay, so again, there's a problem in that sense anyway. So they would say, oh, let's borrow from the tens column. So let's change that to three tens and borrow a ten here. Again, they've used the word borrow, which I again don't necessarily like. So they would do 11 subtract 4 is 7. Then they would say 3 subtract 6. Again, they would say can't do 3 subtract 6. Now notice also one thing to say, they may be talking about 3 subtract 6 versus what it really is, 30 subtract 60. They may or may not be doing that. 
Okay, so they may actually be doing that fine, but I think this method encourages you to think more about the digits. So again here, you might say, can't do three subtracts it, so let's borrow from the seven, or borrow from the hundred, change that to a six. Now look, this is starting to get really messy here. Just because I've got different colored pens, I think it, it it's, it's okay, but we've got 13 subtract six, which is actually equal to seven, and then you've got six subtract two, uh, again, watch how I've just fallen into it there and said 6 subtract 2 rather than 600 subtract 200. Even I fall into it with this method and it's equal to 400. Now, I'm checking on my calculator that that's actually right right now. I'm not entirely even confident with that method. I don't feel um, safe with that method because of what's going on here. Look at, look at um, around here that's getting very messy I'm not even sure what I'm doing but it's it's confusing for me so I just wanted to point that out for you so the message from that is it's not always uh, cool to be messy it can just be a pain sometimes it's you know if you're messy it's, it shows you're cool or whatever but actually I think in this case it's actually causing you problems with your maths let's do one more a double jump with the borrow again I, f I find this causes a lot of confusion so we would have 701 subtract 234, 1 subtract 4, again, 1 subtract 4 can't do, maybe they're saying, and so you borrow. You can't borrow from the 0, um, so you borrow from the 70, that's what might be said, borrow from the 70, and change that to a 69, and then you carry the 1 over here, 11 subtract 4, 4 is 7, 9 subtract 3 is equal to 6, and 6 subtract 2 is equal to 4. Okay, so again, for me, this is looking messy. If I zoom in here, that's very confusing, and I think it, it, I'm not sure I've got the right answer. So, I've got a, a slightly different way of doing it. I wondered if you're interested in this way and what you think. Right, imagine you're doing the same questions again, so I'm doing them all over again. 751, and I'm subtracting 234, and I'll put a line under it here. I'll actually move this up here, because I'm actually a bit short of space on this page, like that. Now, 1 subtract 4, you can do. There is an answer to 1 subtract 4. It's actually negative 3. So let's write that down. Rather than saying you can't do it, it's negative 3. In fact, if I'm being really particular, I like write, writing my negative 3s like that. Now, I really encourage students to talk about the value here. It's 5 tens subtract 3 tens, i.e. 50 subtract 30, which is obviously 20. So we would write 20 on a separate line. And lastly, 700 subtract 200, which is 700 subtract 200, which is clearly 500. And then I put a line under that, and I'd combine these. I've done my subtraction, now I'm adding the answers up, I'm combining the answers. 500 add 20 is 520, add a negative 3, well that's just like subtracting 3, so it's equal to 517. And I found that preserves the place value, that really helps us think about place value, and it stops us saying things that are wrong like can't do, I also think it's actually less messy. I think it is, but I'd love to hear from you what you think. Right, next example. This one had the, the double borrow, I think. So actually, what might be quite a nice idea is for me to put it beside uh, the double borrow here. Seven hundred and forty-one. That's how I did it before, and this is how I'm going to do it now. 741, subtract 264. 1 subtract 4, you can do, is negative 3. 40 subtract 60 is actually negative 20, you can do. And 700 subtract 200 is equal to 500. Now I'm going to combine these. 500 combined with negative 20 is 480. Combined with a negative 3 is 477, positive 477. I actually think this looks a bit better than that and is a little less confusing. 
but maybe kids need to be introduced to negatives before they do this activity. Right, last one. Um, this one had the jump borrow, so again, I might just bring this one over here um, just as a by way of comparison. So this is the one we did before, exactly the same, and I wondered which you prefer. So we've got 701, subtract 234, line under it. One subtract four you can do, it's negative three. No tens, subtract three tens, is actually negative 30. And 700, subtract 500, uh, sorry, 200 is equal to positive 500. Again, if you combine these, 500 uh, combined with negative 30 is 470, combined with negative 3 is 467, a positive. Okay, and that's um, how I might introduce the column method in my classes and how it's gone to, to good success. Now, just one last thing, never forget you have a brain, and in maths you can be creative, and it's something I learned on the, the sort of Joe Bowler course about number sense. A lot of these problems, you don't have to write down with mental, with uh, sorry, written methods. You can actually work them out in your head if you use your brain. So, 751, subtract 234. 751, subtract 234. What I might have done is I might have, instead in my head, converted uh, what I'm subtracting into a nice round number. I might have said, uh, uh, let's do 751, subtract 240. Okay, so taking off 240 is quite easy because 51 subtract 40 is 11, and so I therefore have 511. But I've taken off 6 too much. If you notice what I've taken off, it's 6 bigger than what I wanted to take off. So I have to add 6 back at the end to make the answer the same. So that's how I may have done that question. There are other methods, there are loads of other methods. That's the beauty of being creative and using your imagination. But it's just to make kids think it's not, you don't always have to do these in columns. Right, another one, 741 uh, subtract 264. So 741 subtract 264. What I might have done, it's always the second one that causes me the problem. So I might have just done 741 subtract 300. Yeah, because that's nice and easy. It's 441. Now, I have ended up taking up, I've taken off 36 more than I needed to. So what I would do with the 441 is I would add back the 36 in my head, which is quite easy. It's simply 477. So again, 477, that was one way of doing it in my head without column method. And there may be loads of others even better than that method. And the last one, things like this really um, worry me when kids go straight for column methods on this. 701 subtract 234. If ever there was a method to do straight away without worrying about columns, it's something that's close to 100. So this is like 700 subtract 234. 700 subtract 200 is 500, take away 30 is 470, take away 4 is going to be 466. Uh, now, I started off, rather than 701 take away 234, I started off with 700, which is 1 less. So I've got to add one more back onto my final answer to make it the same. Okay, So the answer would therefore be 466, add back the 1, is 467. And that's how I would have got this. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. Read it in conjunction with the blog post. But the idea is there's maybe a slightly different way of doing your column subtraction. And also never forget you've got your number sense to do these problems.